It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world. As we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas, discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. I'm so excited today. We are going to do something a little bit different. This is Discover Texas, remember? So we're discovering Tex-Mex on, on the grill, delicious food. We've got fajitas, short ribs, and uh, jalapeno poppers. I'm gonna make my own pico de gallo, my own barbecue sauce for the poppers. So stick around, because right now I'm gonna start by seasoning the fajitas and the ribs. This fajita seasoning is great for chicken or beef. In a bowl, add one tablespoon of cornstarch, three teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of paprika, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of beef bouillon, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon garlic powder, quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, quarter of a teaspoon of ground cumin. Mix well and enjoy on chicken or beef fajitas. Let's start seasoning these. I just grab a little bit of this delicious homemade fajita seasoning and I like my ribs with a bunch of this stuff too. They taste delicious. Wow, I'm looking forward to this. It is a hot day here in South Texas, but can't uh, these ribs and fajitas, look at this. This is a nice piece of fajita right here, wow. Just spread it evenly. As much as you can. You don't really want to need to get rid of all that fat because this is what's going to season this fajita. It gives it delicious flavor. Wow. But I do want all that seasoning to be smothered with a seasoning. Delicious. And here's another piece of meat. That's gorgeous. Look at that. This piece looks good. And remember, the underside is going to have some fat. But you want that. You really need that. This um, fajita seasoning... It uh, turns kind of red. I have chili powder, paprika. I have a little bit of cornstarch. It helps it adhere to the meat. Um, it's got a little bit of bite too because I put a little bit of cayenne pepper. Look at this piece of meat. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful. All right, we're ready to take this over to the grill. Let's do it. Okay, beautiful meat getting ready to go on the grill here. Check this out. Whoa, nice and hot. Get these forks out and I'm just gonna lay them across. I don't wanna drop this though. Let's go ahead and put that side up here for now. Stretch it over nice. I have a few, um, a few ribs in here too I wanna cook. There we go, we've already cleaned this grill. So we know it's clean and here are the short ribs, yummy. They take about the same time to cook. We don't want to dry this meat. So we'll stick this right in here. And this piece right here. Let me put this in the middle. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to close it for now, but I'm, we're going to go work on these jalapeno poppers. These tasty jalapeno poppers are a party favorite. I begin by removing the stems and then cutting each one in half. It's important to remove the membranes and the seeds, otherwise it will be very hot. In a bowl, add eight ounces of softened cream cheese, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, and two tablespoons of chopped green onions. Mix well. Fill each half with a cheese mixture. Take a 12 ounce package of sliced bacon and cut it in half. Now wrap the poppers and secure each one with a toothpick. Baste with barbecue sauce, place jalapeno poppers on the grill and cook them until the bacon looks crispy around the edges and enjoy. Okay, now that we've put together our jalapeno poppers, now we've got the last step for them. So this is what I really like. This homemade um, barbecue sauce is delicious and I like to coat them um, on top and pretty much that's all you need because it really sticks to the bacon and the flavors and see 
This sauce is a little bit different. It has tamarind paste. Mmm. I had tamarindo, it's called in Spanish, and I had some of this in the refrigerator, and I thought, why not? Well, from then on, that's what's happening. We have been making barbecue sauce with tamarind, and it is delicious. So, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as well. So, what I'm doing now, I'm getting these poppers coated with the barbecue sauce so we can put them on the grill. So, it looks good. And we can always baste them later. So, I'm going to grab this little board and set them over here. This barbecue sauce is absolutely delicious. In a medium-sized saucepan, add two cups of ketchup, half cup of water, half cup of apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of tamarind paste, or you can add half a tablespoon of mustard seed, two-thirds cup of light brown sugar, half a tablespoon of pepper, half a tablespoon of onion powder, half a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Bring to boil and reduce heat. Simmer for about 50 minutes and don't forget to stir frequently. Our fajitas are looking good. Now we're going to get these poppers out there. There we go. I, I just put them on a separate um, sheet, grill sheet. It kind of helps keep them together too. Although the toothpick helps, let me tell you, a lot. Without the toothpick, the bacon curls up and tends to fall off. So um, this is delicious. My favorite, my family's favorite. So it makes a big difference. And see, this barbecue sauce will caramelize a bit. And that's what gives it that bite. And it's a little tangy and delicious. Oh, delicious. So. Get this, get it smothered with barbecue sauce. If I can get a good grip on this one. There we go, and here's the last one. Perfect. Okay. Now we close it back up and let it do its thing. I have a small onion here, piece of an onion really, and I just want to show you how easy it is to make this a delicious grilled onion. And it's just a, a very unique recipe shared by a good friend of mine. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the fajita seasonings right here. So we're just going to add seasoning to it like this on both sides, on top. That gives it that little uh, saltiness and flavor and stick butter in there. You can put one in there and one on top and all you do is close it up like a dome. Just make a little bubble there and that is it. How easy is that? Now it goes on the grill. Super delicious. Okay, now we're gonna make the pico de gallo. Yummy. Simple recipe. Tomato, lettuce, cilantro, serrano or jalapeno, and limes or lemons. They work, believe me. So what you do is dice the onion as uh, as big as you want it. I like mine kind of small, not tiny, tiny, but and I also like to use sweet onions. You don't have to, but I prefer sweet onions. But um, I'm going to use a whole onion today because we're going to use the pico de gallo not only for the tacos, but we're also going to use it as kind of a, a salsa dip to for corn chips. Something to eat, you know, a little snack before the tacos. Why not? Now we put it over here. And same thing with the tomatoes. Just dice them up, however, how big, however you want them. And uh, wow, once you put the lemon, it totally changes the flavor. All right, let's uh, work on this cilantro. I've already washed it, rinsed it off. I'm gonna remove that and just grab this whole thing. I like a lot of cilantro in my pico. So, and chop it up. As easy and simple as that. 
you see a stem that's too big, just pull it out. Stems do not scare me, do not bother me, and they add flavor. I love them, love them. Cilantro is just so refreshing. And just go across and chop it as much as you want to. It doesn't have to be perfect, which it's not going to be because it's not as easy as dicing something. But we're cutting this up, so good deal. There we go. I can't tell you exactly how much time to grill the meat for, but let me tell you, it depends on your grill. So some grills are made a little higher. This one's a little, this jalapeno popper's burning, so we need to turn this down. Now we're going to cut the serrano. I'm just going to remove the stem. And dice it up small, that's it. This serrano pepper is um, ideal for pico de gallo, but you can also use jalapeno. It is hot, remember, but the seeds, it's your choice if you want to remove them or not. I left some of them, I'm not real picky about it. We like a little bite to it, but, um, but I do like them sliced thin, little, because I'd hate to buy into, bite into a big piece. So just dice it up, little bitty, and it's easier on the palate, I tell you, because it can get hot. See, that's enough for us, for this whole pan, because we don't, we like a little bit, but not a lot of bite. Okay, we're going to do a few lemons here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them all up first, and then we'll squeeze them right on it and stir it, and that's a big old pod of pico de gallo. Yummy. I do three of them. Yummy. Boy, that smells just so good. So, so good. Whoops. That was a juicy one. It flew the coop. And you do want a lot of limes to give it that bite. Here's the last one in here for now. Let's see what happens. Oh, it worked. That's a lot of juice. You can add a little bit of salt, pepper if you'd like. We don't usually. And that is it. This is the famous pico de gallo that is so delicious on tacos. Okay, the poppers look like they're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and get them out. And uh, that one could use a little more time. Oh, they look beautiful. Ooh. I've heard that you could also use queso asadero. Oh, I bet that's delicious. I'm going to have to try that next time. That cheese is good. Normally, if you're in the oven, you don't have to flip them. And here, if, you, if I hadn't flipped them, a lot of this cheese wouldn't have come out. But that's okay. This one needs just a little bit more. I'm going to leave it right there for a little bit. Okay, beautiful. This is cooking beautiful. Look at these short ribs. They're absolutely perfect. Put them on the top so they don't dry up. They look so good. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me get the pan and start getting them out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put a few corn tortillas here. And I'm going to put a couple of flour tortillas. Okay, so these are the short ribs. I'm going to go ahead and cut individual pieces with each little bone. Each little bone has a lot of meat. That's what we hope for anyway. Oh my goodness. They smell delicious, I'm telling you. So good, so good. Okay, those are done. And these we always cut against the grain. And we like kind of thin little pieces so we can put them in a tortilla and make Good looking tacos. Easier to chew too. So, looks good. There we go. Nice and nice. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put them in this pan. 
and keep it covered. Move these poppers aside, and there we go. Okay, put all the ribs on that side. Move them over, and fajitas on this side. Let's go get some more fajitas. I'm gonna cover this. The tortillas got real hot. All right, I'm gonna take this onion out. Here it comes. Check this out. And this is our onion. Set it in there. We're gonna cover it for now. Keep it warm. Oh, this one's ready. It's pink and it's not bloody. All right, I believe we're done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut these against the grain, remember. They make it more tender. Mmm. I can smell it. I'm hungry. Hungry, hungry. Okay, we're about to get some tacos going. Take a look at this onion. Yummy. Look at that. That is one delicious grilled onion. Yummy. I can't wait to try that. Okay, now I'm going to grab fajita. Mmm, yummy. Look at that. One of these. That's going to be my taco. I'm going to get my popper. Beautiful. I'm going to get two just to make sure that I have enough for myself. And look at this. This is the pico de gallo. Isn't that beautiful? And that's where it goes, right on the taco. How delicious is that? Make sure you put a lot of pico de gallo. Oh, mm, mm, mm. I don't want to forget this delicious onion. <gasps> Caramelized. How great is that? Oh my goodness, look at that. Just look at that. We sure enjoyed this meal. Let me tell you, this was delicious. Tex-Mex on the grill, special flavor, special seasonings. Definitely a great, time we've had out here. This is Annie Studebaker with Discover Texas. Until next time.